Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Hey, Thrive Loud listeners, Lou Diamond here. Welcome to another fun mini-sode episode on Thrive Loud. Today we are featuring Lisa Betts Lacroix. I had the extreme pleasure of getting to meet Lisa Betts Lacroix last year in 2018. And the two of us did a home and home on our podcast show, her show, the Superpower You podcast. And she came on Thrive Loud and we had an absolute blast. My intern and production team was listening to some of the old episodes when we choose which one we want to bring forward and someone brought to my attention. This was an amazing one because we had an instant on-air chemistry and we got along in so many different ways. It was a lot of fun. Lisa is a speaker, writer, podcaster, dance performer, and she's an outspoken advocate for empowered living, learning, and aging. And she picked up competitive ballroom dancing very late in life, and it's become an incredible passion of hers, and she speaks about it a lot. In this particular outtake from our original interview last year, Lisa shares with us exactly how it all came to be, how she became this competitive dancer, and then I really wanted to figure out when she has trouble thriving, what she turns to to get herself back on the thriving track. So she's a rock star. She's a lot of fun. Check out her Super Power You podcast as well. It's really great to listen to. And if you're in the Northern California area, kind of try to find her around there. She's everywhere. Lisa Betts Lacroix here on a Thrive Loud Minisode. So Lisa, I wanted to, to jump to this because you, you hinted at it. And then I'm going to ask the question that I've been dying to ask. But we'll start with my first point. Later in life, you decided to not only jump into dance, but jump into competitive dance. What brought on that inspiration and talk a little (laughs) bit about that journey? Because that is, I'm not saying that it's, uh, you could do anything at any age in life. I don't think there's anything later in life or I don't, I believe that you can do what you want to do when you want to do it. But what, what inspired you to say, this is something I want to take on? So my kids were starting to get a bit older and I spent a lot of my brain power and life force energy and time nurturing my kids. My kids are independently educated. They didn't go to school. And I run a pretty large um, group of over 350 families of people in the Bay Area who are independently educating their kids outside of school as well for academic and intellectual reasons. And so I put a lot of time into that. And when my kids were starting to get older, I happened to be out walking around in my neighborhood one day and I past a ballroom dance studio in the neighborhood. And I look through the window and it's kind of like one of those moments from that film, um, Shall We Dance? You know? Um, And I saw these incredible high level Latin dancers, teenagers, who I later found out were very highly ranked in the world, just, just amazing. And I just looked at them and said, oh my God, whatever they're doing, I want to be able to do that. That looks incredible. Of course, they've been dancing since they were five and I was already almost 50. But I did walk into the place and after a series of events having to do with asking questions and then walking out and then coming back and then buying a card of 10 and then not using it and then checking out other dance studios over the course of about eight months, I finally got myself there and took a class and completely fell in love with the type of dance that I was doing. And it was around mid-December and around December 31st, I wrote out sort of my, I do every year I do my year planning and with my goals. And I said, I want to compete in a ballroom mm. dance competition sometime this year. That was uh, two thousand and f- the end of 2013, I think. And then about two weeks after that, the teacher of that class said to me, you know what? You should compete. I was like, <gasps> oh, 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 you are not going to believe this. I just wrote that down. I'm in. When do I start? So I uh, basically started training pretty hard for a couple months and I did my first competition in at the end of April of that year. And I just was bitten by the bug hard. And so I think that year I did about six competitions. The next year I did about 10 and then, wow. I, you know. So I just really fell in love with um, competing and dancing and just the sport. I mean, ballroom dance is a really intense sport. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's like any other sport. It's really hard. It's really challenging. And part of that is what makes it amazing. Now, how 
that came to really be meaningful to me in my life. I live in Silicon Valley. I've been involved in the quantified self movement since its very beginnings in 2008, uh, from the first meeting at Kevin Kelly's house. And I've been really involved in people in the Bay Area who are looking at increasing lifespan, increasing longevity. And I know because I'm around so many scientists, including my husband, uh, people who are really working at curing age-related diseases, that we are living longer and longer lives. And it's occurred to me, especially after I got involved in dance, that we we have these lo much longer lives, but we haven't in our minds, in our mindset, caught yet caught up with the idea that we're going to have a much longer age to live in. So we are still operating in our culture in many ways under this idea that, well, once you're 50 or once you're 60, it's too late or you're too old. And I think in being an older dancer, it really uh, made me look at that query because I started to think, oh, I'm, I, a lot of times, oh, I'm too old. I started too late. All these kids start when they're five or if only I'd started when I was 20 or if only I'd started when I was 30. And I just realized, you know, this is um, a symptom of this misbelief or this old you know, idea that we haven't quite caught up with that we have to be a certain age. I, I decided, you know what? Forget that. I'm going to be a stand for the fact that we can do things, whatever we want at any time. Mm, I love it. I, I just love it all because uh, you, you've embodied your passion your entire lives. And, and this, you, you, from, from your speaking, your acting, to taking on this, this Superpower You podcast and obviously com competitive dancing and ballroom dancing, which I do know, I agree with you. It is, it is a sport and it is really challenging and very difficult. A lot of preparation and time and, and energy goes into it. So the Thrive Aloud community totally loves this because this is exactly what Thriving Loud is all about. And I love asking the guests on this, this question, uh, Lisa. The question is, when you have trouble thriving, who or what practice do you turn to to get back on the thriving track? Wow. I love that question because it really has to do with looking inside to where we actually have a growth mindset, right? And I, I love growth mindset. I believe in it. I believe that we can always be moving forward. And the reality is that when you're challenged, you're challenged. So I'd have to say that I am a people person. I'm pretty relational and I reach out to I reach out to friends and supporters and people who love me and people who are willing to reflect back to me that I'm in the middle of a moment right now and that it will pass. And I find that whenever I'm going through a tough time, and those are the times often when I do lose my mojo and I do lose my focus on what I'm doing, that if I reach out to the people that I know support me, that I get myself, my best self reflected back to me by those people because they see me and they can see me and keep holding the vision of who I am and what I am and what's possible for me, even when I can't. I got to tell you, I was a fan of you before we uh, started the podcast and it just got that much better. Lisa <laughs> Beth LaCroix, you well, rock. I, mean, I feel like when we I, met, it was like, okay, we, ha we, we share a lot here in terms of our, in terms of our orientation in the world. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Check us out and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts or head on over to thriveloud.com. And while you're there, click the Get Connected link to learn more about upcoming shows, special events, and other great promotions coming from Thrive Loud.